My next guest says his calling came from the other side. Tyler Henry says he first discovered he could connect the living and the dead when he was 10 years old, when he predicted, he says, the passing of his grandmother. Now, by the age of 19, he'd become Hollywood's so-called go-to medium, connecting celebrities like the Kardashians, Reverend Wilson, even Lizzo, uh, with their loved ones from beyond the grave for four seasons on the hit show on E! Entertainment, The Hollywood Medium with Tyler Henry. Well, now he's 26 years old. He's got more than 300,000 people on a waiting list for private readings, and he's making house calls with his new Netflix original, Life After Death with Tyler Henry. He's giving people the gift of closure on their past while attempting to reclaim his own. Take a look. The answers I give to others I so badly could benefit for myself. Three years ago, my mom discovered that she was taken as a baby. The woman who I actually thought was my mother was a murderer. I want to learn more about what happened to my mom's family. She could have had a completely different life, and that was taken from her by this criminal. I know I'm not like her. I know I'm a good person. Joining us from Los Angeles, California, please welcome Tyler Henry to the TAM fam. Oh, my goodness. You have, uh, you're all grown up now. I mean, we met you on your first show. You were 19. You're 26 years old now. How do you describe, Tyler, when you first became famous, the Kardashians on E! to where your life is now at age 26? Sure. Well, you know, it's been an incredible transformation. And good morning, Tamron, and good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. It's so surreal to see how my life has gone. You know, I started with Hollywood Medium. Now I'm on this new show where I just focus on really reading everyday people and meeting that need where I think it's needed most. Let, for, for understanding and, and for people to understand what it is that you have, you don't refer to it as a gift, right? What do you That's call correct. it? An ability? Consider- Sure, I consider it more of an ability, just in the sense that, you know, when we think of a gift, we think of it as something that's granted to somebody. But for me, my ability really requires refinement and practice. And so in that way, when it's applied under the right context with the right person where there's really a need, then that ability does become a gift. But it's really about how it's used. You were 10 years old when you first realized this ability with your grandmother's passing. Tell me about that. So I woke up one night and just had what can only be described as a knowingness that my grandmother was going to die. And it was the most bizarre thing. It felt like a memory that hadn't happened yet. And it was really confusing, especially being only 10. So I went into the room to try to explain this feeling to my mom and I was upset. And as we were talking, her phone rang and we were interrupted. And she told me to hold on and she picked up the phone. And as she did, it was my dad calling her to tell her that he had just watched my grandmother die in front of him. Mm -hmm. So that was really the catalyst. But at 10 years old, you don't recognize that as an ability. It's really just more something that happened to me. You know, and and we're very transparent on the show, there are people who are skeptics, right? There are still people who say that show is staged and this is not real. And and one of those moments happened. um, You encountered Alan Thicke. Alan Thicke passed away in 2016. He was a guest on the show, right? And and you told him um, to be mindful of his heart health. And then he passed away um, of heart complications. And there were people who said, well, you just guessed, right? There's What are the odds? It's a man, a man of a certain age, heart condition. What? How do you respond to moments like that still? I would be the world's best guesser. But I always say with the readings that I do, the emphasis is on validation, specifics, details that are kind of unknowable. So in a reading, whether I'm reading a celebrity or an everyday person, I have to be able to come up with information that can't be Googled, can't be researched, can't be guessed, can't be gleaned from body language. And by my client's own testaments, they often acknowledge those types of things come through. I think for me on the new show that I did, uh, there was a whole instant around a fire that came through in a reading, and then that fire went on to happen within under 24 hours of me predicting it as I talked to this couple uh, in this reading. So it's things like that that can't be explained and can't be reasoned away. But I really encourage people to think critically, to encourage skepticism. I consider myself a bit of a skeptical activist, but I think when you look at the information objectively, 
you just can't explain it all the way. Yeah, help me understand. I know, and you just, you had a great point. You can't explain it all the way. I have, of course. I always say I'm a Virgo. And I read anything about a Virgo, I'm like, that's me. I have gone and had tarot cards. I've been in New Orleans where this lady's going for her birthday. I've gone and had cards read. I, there was a clairvoyant I walked in. I truly don't know what to believe. I keep an open mind about everything. I say that, though, to say to you, when you say reading, what does that help me understand? Help me, what does that mean? Is it an energy you feel? Is it a, what is it? What is a reading? A reading is really just about connection. I happen to have the ability that when I sit with people, I get very strong intuitive impressions. And, you know, I don't see dead people walking around. It's not like the sixth sense. That would be terrifying. Um, if anything, I just have kind of trained myself to get into an altered state of mind where I'm just hyper receptive of anything that might pop into my head. The best way to describe it is kind of like active daydreaming. So, you know, when you're in class in high school and the teacher's kind of going on and you've kind of tuned out, yeah. um, essentially that's what I have to do for my job to kind of get into this state where I can then really connect on an intuitive level and not a logical one. And that seems to be where the magic happens, when I can connect to that level without fear, taking the risk of being wrong. Um, but very often it ends up being correct. Wow. Next, the medical emergency that could have cost Tyler his ability and how he found peace with his family's dark past after the break. Is there a Harold? That's, That's my grandfather. That <laughs> it's always creepy when that happens. <laughs> I keep getting kind of a famous feeling. Like, You're right on. There is a reference to someone finding a spot on an x-ray of our lungs. How did you know that? Like, you felt the spot? <laughs> back with clairvoyant medium Tyler Henry. Um, Tyler, it's so interesting. You allow people to, to see a more vulnerable side of your life in the new show, Life After Death. Um, why do you think um, there's so much power in connecting now your story versus having different celebrities come in or different people come in for you to read? Why is it important for you now to tell your story more? Sure. Well, you know, I think there's great power in owning our story and reclaiming it. I think there's something to be said about the vulnerability that I see in my work uh, through the extreme grief that I'm faced with. Um, but I also found myself on this journey kind of having the tables turned on me where I then went down a pursuit of answers myself in trying to get closure around a huge family mystery. So while the first show focused on this kind of formulaic idea of I show up, I do the reading, I leave, this new show on Netflix really conveys the fact that this is a personal process I go through. I don't have all the answers. I don't claim to have all the answers. And I even have a big family mystery of my own that I need help finding answers to. Do you turn it on and off? I mean, so if we go to lunch, do I have to worry about you reading me? How, do you, how does that work? You know, it does happen, but I will say I kind of liken it more to a volume dial in the sense that I can kind of mentally tune it out. And then when I go to a reading, I have certain processes that kind of help me tune in or turn that volume up. And that's why you see me scribble. It's really just a process that I've kind of created to turn on and then turn off. Do you ever feel sometimes it's not appropriate to tell someone what you're reading or feeling, especially if it's a friend and you're hanging out and you get a feeling of something? How do you censor yourself? Well, I always prefer that people reach out to me for readings. I don't tend to give information unsolicited because you never know what headspace someone is in or if they're even open to receiving a message. But yeah, when I do a reading, I do my best to liken my job to that of a mailman in the sense that I don't write the letters, I just deliver the message. But it can be done in a way that's compassionate and diplomatic and tactful. And that's what I try to do with my readings. I just try to leave everybody better than I found them. I wonder how much of a toll this takes on your body. I know that you had a collapsed lung recently when you were, was it 19? You had another health condition. Do you think those are linked to the stress that this causes on your body? They may. Uh, you know, my body definitely takes a toll. I always say when information comes through, it uses my other five senses to communicate. So very often in reading, I'll get physical sensations that correspond with how somebody passed. Sometimes it'll feel like a song stuck in my head. A lot's going on when I do a reading, and I know it sounds strange, but uh, at the age of 18, my actual actually experienced brain surgery um, as a result of a brain cyst. And about three weeks before I was hospitalized, I communicated to my mom that I felt like my brain was swelling intuitively. And at the time she was like, you know, it's just a headache. Of course your brain's not swelling, that's an overreaction. And sure enough, indeed, I had hydrocephalus, that very issue. So it was a testament to going with your intuition and really listening to your body. 